Hey, what is up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today watching Halloween Havoc 1995. Uh, keeping up with the theme of watching the Halloween wrestling shows throughout the past. I've watched a few of the Halloween Havocs throughout the past days. Uh, this is a weird one. Honestly, Halloween Havoc 1995. Hulk Hogan vs. The Giant in a monster truck match. This is one that honestly you're going to have to see to believe and there's more questions drawn up about this match than there are answers. I can honestly tell you uh, the Giant was was fresh in WCW. He hadn't even wrestled in his debut match. His debut match was actually um, booked to be later on the card um, against Hulk Hogan for the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. Um, the Giant was going to be fight, fighting as a member of the Dungeon of Doom, trying to take the championship and in the reign of Hulkamania for Kevin Sullivan. Um, and for some reason, they booked to have a monster truck match before the main event as a way to sort of build up Hogan versus the Giant. To me, honestly, if the Giant really wanted to, to end Hulkamania and take his championship, I don't know how he would have done that by jumping into a monster truck and pushing uh, another car around on top of the arena. He probably would have wanted to shave, save everything for the match itself. Um, if you need <laughs> to, to, to know what a monster truck match is, I will let you know that you are not the only one who needs to know. And I still honestly don't know how this is possible. Um, Halloween Havoc is housed at the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit, Michigan. And at the arena that is next door to the Joe Louis Arena, which they say is five stories up, they put two monster trucks on top of the arena. I don't even know how the roof is able to hold the power of two monster trucks on top of it. Um... But I guess they made sure that it was reinforced. That's probably the reason why they didn't do it on top of the Joe Lewis Arena. Um, but they 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 make a ring that's a, a, they don't really say how big it is, but they outline it with um, you know traffic uh, pylons. I guess you can say um, and so sort of have a lot of flashing lights. And as the cars are about to go, sort of in a head-to-head -head competition they're welded together um, that way that you can't break free it's not a demolition derby it is just to show who has the power of both cars I don't know um, if this is something that maybe Monster Jam was getting into bed with WCW or they were getting into bed with TNT um, sports if they were going to start being on TNT and this was a sort of a way for Turner to help everybody out as far as I know, Turner didn't own Monster Trucks or Monster Jam. I know that, you know, there were a lot of WCW trucks, like uh, the NWO, Goldberg, Sting. Um, they had a Nitro one. Um, just about every big name had one. I, I don't know if WCW paid to sponsor these cars or if Monster Jam paid to use their likeness in order to maybe sway wrestling fans to, to, to watch. I'm not sure, but uh, a guy sits down who is not from WCW. I'm guessing that he's from Monster Jam uh, to tell us everything that's going on inside of this match. And basically, the cars start to, to push each other around. It's raining. It makes no sense. Water is flying everywhere um, off, of, off of the arena. I don't really know how this is safe, but... Um, in each car was the wrestler Hulk Hogan was driving his and the giant was driving his and in the other car uh, in the other seat is um, I, I would guess a driver I don't know if these monster trucks were suited with two wheels and maybe the, the, the wrestlers one didn't work and maybe they were just you know working us putting on a show um, but much like a Hulk Hogan match um, basically, the giant shoves Hogan around a few times. It looks like, um, you know, Hogan's car is about to be eliminated. And then out of the middle of nowhere, Hogan's car makes a big push and the giant is outside of the circle. Uh, immediately, once the match is over, the giant exits his monster truck, um, starts to attack Hulk Hogan on the roof. 
and uh, picks him up for a choke slam. When he picks him up for the choke slam, he actually puts him on the top ledge of the arena, and him and Hogan start to battle. At one point, Hogan breaks off the chokehold, um, basically by swinging his hands up. At this point, uh, the giant loses his balance, and he falls off of the roof of the arena. Um, basically, there's no camera to be able to show where the giant falls. They're just able to pan out um, into the, the lake uh, next to uh, um, the arena, and they just show the rain falling into the lake. And they come back and say, this was not supposed to happen. Um, they have to kick to their next match, which is uh, Randy Savage versus Lex Luger. Um because Luger uh, had, had had a match earlier in the night that he won by disqualification um, against Ming. Um, so they have to kick it to a Savage versus Luger. And we don't know if we're going to get the Giant versus Hogan main events for the WCW Championship or what they're going to do. In the main event of Halloween Havoc 1995, the Giant ended up making his way down to the ring and the match was able to happen. During the uh, co-main event, Randy Savage versus Lex Luger, Jimmy Hart came running down to the ring and interrupted the match, uh, talking to Randy Anderson, the referee, and the, the, the uh, announcers were wondering what the hell was going on. If Hart was um, somehow now involved in the Savage versus Luger feud, or if he was just talking to the referee about the match that was coming up next, which was going to be um, Giant versus Hogan. Um, Jimmy Hart ended up getting bumped off of the uh, the apron uh, when Randy Savage threw Lex Luger into him, uh, and he was sort of gone for the end of the match. And then once uh, the the Luger versus Savage match was over, um, Hogan and the Giant made their way to the ring again. Um, this would have been a really good look for Hulk Hogan if he wouldn't have been wearing this throughout the entire show. Um, basically, to describe what Hogan was wearing, Hogan was pretty much dressed up in 1995 to what 1997 um, Hollywood Hulk Hogan would be in the black do-rag, the black t-shirt, uh, black wrestling tights, and in this case, he was wearing red cowboy boots. Uh, on the black tights, um, they had sort of the... Um, white lightning going down the side. So you could definitely tell that this was a character that Hulk Hogan was dreaming up that he would get to play sooner than later. Um, only in this place, he was still uh, portraying a baby face, but we saw him earlier in the night giving away a, um, a Harley Davidson uh, for um, WCW. They had had a contest. The guy from Alabama ended up winning it. And Hogan gave him the keys and gave a promo about, um, you know, having the machine versus machine in the match uh, against the giant later on. Um, I still have many questions about the machine versus machine monster truck match that went down. But um, basically, Hogan came down and he tried to calm down the fans as much as he could, basically telling them to quiet down um, because he had thought that the giant was dead. I mean, we had just seen um, maybe five minutes earlier um, the giant fall five stories off of the top of the arena, um, and we, we didn't know what was going to happen. Hogan and Hart were in the ring um, trying to quiet everybody down. Um, Hogan was trying to tell everybody that what had happened was an accident and that he didn't have any part of it. And then you could hear the Dungeon of Doom theme um, start to laugh uh, from the back. At this point, the Taskmaster just makes his way towards the ring, and boom! There's the giant. There's no answer for him showing up in an ambulance. He's not wrapped up in any um, you know, medical tape or anything like that. Just boom, fresh as can be. Here comes the giant. He's not dead. Um, once this match is finally about to start, we hear Bruce Buffer. Let's get ready to rumble. Hogan takes off his do-rag, and you can see where his eyebrows would be is that he has painted the Taskmaster, Kevin Sullivan, uh, sort of uh, eyebrows for himself. And this, honestly, you can see from the giant, get a look from across the ring like, what the hell is this? Almost questioning the match himself, wondering what version of Hogan he's going to get. Um, from here, um, we get about a 14-minute match that is much like a lot of Hulk Hogan matches when he fights bigger guys. Um, he comes out, he gets a little bit of steam earlier in the match, 
and then here comes the heat. Um, the giant is sort of just using his size and his weight to his advantage, throwing Hogan around the ring, picking him up, holding him in bear hugs. Um, and then at one point, in the middle of nowhere almost, we see the Hogan hit the big leg. Uh, then he hits the leg drop. Oh, I guess he hits the big boot, and then he hits the leg drop off of the rope. Uh, right as the referee is, is sort of turning to get in position for the, for the leg drop, uh, we see him fall right down. It's not until we see the uh, um, instant replay that we see that Jimmy Hart is actually the one that hits um, Randy Anderson, the referee, with the title belt, um, dropping him down. At this point, you can see Jimmy Hart trying to talk to, to Hulk Hogan. Basically, Hogan's trying to ask, what the hell's going on? Why is the referee down? And we see... And we see the giant. So honestly, this is his first match he's ever been in in WCW. Um, you know, he's very new to the business. He's supposed to be laid out. You honestly see him pick up his head, look at Hogan and Jimmy Hart, and then put it back down. I, I don't... You want to give him the benefit of the doubt that that's what he was supposed to do to show that he wasn't knocked out. But you also got to wonder if he was so new and, and such a fan of Hogan, he wanted to see what was going down. But um, Hogan and Jimmy uh, basically almost start to get into it a little bit where Hogan suspects that Jimmy turned on him. And at this point, the Giant gets up and we see um, the Giant um, start to fight with Hogan and just overcome him. Uh, and then from the back, uh, we see Lex Luger and Randy Savage coming running down to hit the ring. Uh, almost the instant they hit the ring, Luger turns on Savage, um, joining with the Dungeon of the Doom, starting to celebrate um, with uh, Jimmy Hart. As then the Yeti, this guy is probably one of the biggest fails of WCW's whole time in business. Um, he's basically a seven foot four monster who most people know from the Ravens flock as Reese. Um, but basically, the Dungeon of Doom, the Nitro before Halloween Havoc, broke him out of a, a plate of ice. And the Yeti was coming to fight in WCW. I honestly don't know where this character was going to be going. I know that he was in the following World War III. And before becoming Reese, that was the last time I ever saw the Yeti, if they ever used him ever again. But the Yeti came down to the ring um, as a part of the Dungeon of Doom, grabbed the back of Hogan as the giant had him in a bear hug, and just they sort of just rocked him back and forth. But for some reason, the Yeti was swinging his hips like he was giving it to Hogan in the back. <laughs> I mean, this is one of the biggest piles of wrestle crap that you've ever seen. Um, from here, basically, um, Bruce Buffer gets on the microphone and says, the winner of the match is the Giant because they are disqualifying Hulk Hogan because he brought Jimmy Hart to the ring as the referee. Even though Jimmy Hart turned on Hulk, they're saying that that was the disqualification. But he says, clear as can be, the title cannot change hands on a disqualification. But we are not doing the Nitro report. But if you fast forward the next night to Nitro, WCW gives the Giant the championship, saying that in the contract, it says that the title can change hands on disqualification. So the Giant ends up winning the WCW Championship in his first ever match for WCW. Um, a, a pretty impressive feat. Um, we have Lex Luger joining the Dungeon of Doom. We've got you know Randy Savage basically beat up. Um, we know from getting in the, uh, the Future Machine that at the next pay-per-view, Randy Savage ends up becoming the World Heavyweight Champion um, by winning the 60-man uh, over-the-top Battle Royal World War III. Um, but... I don't really know where any of these feuds go from here. So um, we saw the futuristic Hulk Hogan. We saw the debut and, and one of the only times we ever saw the Yeti. And we saw the Giant win the championship in his first ever match. Nothing spectacular, but it was fun.